We're going to continue looking at topic 2.1, esters, fats and oils. In the previous lecture, we concentrated on esters, and in this revision lecture, we're going to concentrate on the fats and oils. The first learning outcome is to be able to state the benefits of fats and oils in our diet. Now, fats and oils are a very concentrated source of energy. They contain more energy per gram than carbohydrates. They provide insulation and protection. But probably most interesting from a chemical viewpoint is the ability to transport fat soluble vitamins. Now, I have vitamin is polar and soluble in an aqueous solvent, it would be transported around the body by the blood. But if it's non-polar and can't dissolve in the blood, then it's transported by being dissolved in fats or oils. Right, you should be able to describe the structure of fats and oils. And here's a simplified diagram of any fat or oil. But the most important thing to focus on is that from a chemical viewpoint, fats and oils are esters. So they contain this C double bond O, CO, so there's a carbon atom here, okay? And there's three of them, one there, one there, and one there. So there's three ester links in this fatter oil. Okay, so that's the main thing to remember, the fat, they're esters. Here's a more complete structural formula of a fatter oil. And you notice that, well here's the three ester links, then we've got this long chain of carbons and hydrogens. In this example, all three are the same. That's not necessarily always the case. Uh, this chain, can, the chains can be different or the same. It can vary from fat to fat, to oil to oil, or fat to oil. Now in this case we've got a saturated uh, compound. We haven't got any carbon-carbon double bonds in these chains. And that's very important because that affects the melting point of the compound and determines whether or not it's a fat or an oil. Fats are solid at room temperature, oils are liquid at room temperature. This is saturated which should make it a fat. Now, very often we don't show this huge big long chain, we'd simplify it to uh, this has got 15 carbons, so it would be, we simplify it, it'd just be C15H31. And it's not quite so obvious from that formula that it is saturated. So, and it's important that you're able to determine whether or not that chain is saturated or not. Well, if you just look at this chain here for a second, it contains 15 carbons from there to there. Each carbon has got two hydrogens on it, except the one at the end, which has got an extra carbon, an extra hydrogen on it. Okay. So, if we've got N carbons, the number of hydrogens in this chain will be double that, so it'll be 2n, then plus that one at the end. So a bit like the general formula for alkanes, which is CnH2n plus 2, but uh, we've lost one over at this end where the carbon's attached to the C double bond O ester link. So CnH2n plus 1 for this chain means it's saturated. So here's how you're more likely to be presented with the structure of a fatter oil. With the long chain not shown, just uh, shown as C15H31. So this one would be saturated. Uh, two 15s plus one gives you 31. This one's saturated. But this one, C17H33, is unsaturated. If it was saturated, the number of hydrogens would be 35. So it's two hydrogens short which means it must contain one carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, so let's just uh, explain why fats are solid at room temperature and oils are liquid at room temperature in terms of their structure. So here's a fat, 
which we showed earlier on. No carbon-carbon double bonds. And here's our oil, which does contain a carbon-carbon double bond. Now, you can see, maybe slightly exaggerating this diagram, the effect of the carbon-carbon double bond is to make the structure uh, a lot more spread out, not as linear, not as close packed as the fats. Now if you've got lots of these fats, the, these fat molecules, you could pack them close together because they're not all sort of all over the place. So you get very close packing between the fat molecules, whereas the oils you can't pack together closely because they're a bit more skew with. So the fats are close packed, the oils aren't. And because these are close packed, it means that the van der Waals forces are more effective. Uh, these molecules can pack together really closely, so the van der Waals forces are quite effective. Whereas because these molecules are more spread about, more spread apart, the van der Waals forces aren't as effective. Maybe you can demonstrate this using two magnets. If you have two magnets close together, they, they, they attract each other. Okay. You get the attraction. But if you have them far apart, they still got the same magnetic strength, but because they're far apart, uh, the magnetic field is not effective enough to get them pulled close together. So close packing and fats means that uh, they have a higher melting point and hence a solid at room temperature. Oils you cannot close pack, so the intermolecular force is very weak and they tend to be liquids at room temperature. I know how fats and oils are formed from fatty acids and glycerol. Okay, so fats and oils are esters made by a condensation reaction between an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. Okay. For all fats and oils, the alcohol is glycerol. Three carbons, each with an OH group, so we make three ester links. So all fats and oils are made from glycerol and three fatty acids. These are kind of, uh, for the sake of clarity, we haven't really drawn very big fatty acids. In reality, these fatty acids, carboxylic acids really, we only call fatty acids ones that contain about 10 to 20 carbons. So technically I suppose these are actually fatty acids or just carboxylic acids. But, uh, it makes for a very unclear diagram if you draw sort of 15 or 16 carbons along here. So, like when you form an ester, you lose the OH group from the acid and the hydrogen from the alcohol and they go away and make water, leaving a free bond there and there, forming the ester link there. Okay, And then that happens three times. Okay. and three molecules of water are kicked out in the process. So Chris says it's a condensation reaction, just like when you made esters from, a simple ester from an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. So that's condensation. And we'll talk about it in a few minutes, but the reverse process, breaking down the ester, will be hydrolysis. So every fat or oil is made from glycerol and three molecules of fatty acids. I can predict the structure of the fatty acid from the structure of the fat or oil formed. Okay, so here's our oil stroke fat and if they asked you to draw a structural formula of the fats formed by the hydrolysis of this you'd hydrolyze it using either H plus ions or OH minus ions. And just like the hydrolysis of esters, you split the molecule there. One oxygen on one side, one oxygen on the other side. The side with the C double bond O will be the acid side. The other side will be the alcohol side. So, if 
just do this top one the fatty acids would be and we need to put that OH back on which we took off when we formed the ester so there's our fatty acid okay and it'd be the same there and just slightly different here because it's got 16 instead of 14 I can recognize glycerol proper systematic name is propan 123 so it's important you recognize that molecule so that's glycerol which is the alcohol used to form all fats and oils and if you hydrolyze any fat or oil you'll produce three fatty acids and glycerol. I can describe the test for unsaturated fats and oils. It's the same as the test for any unsaturated compound. React it with bromine water. So if you have one double bond it will react to one molecule of bromine, break the double bond and one bromine goes on to each carbon. So sunflower oil is unsaturated hence it's an oil at room temperature add some bromine water to it shake it up it would decolorize the bromine water due to this reaction so you can measure the extent of the unsaturation by seeing how much bromine uh, oil will uh, decolorize and finally you should be able to explain the process of hardening oils so this is how we turn oils like sunflower oil into margarine so here's our sunflower oil lots of carbon carbon double bonds in the fatty acid chain hence doesn't pack together closely so we've got not very effective intermolecular forces so it's an oil at uh, room temperature when we harden the oil we partially remove the double bonds so we partially remove the unsaturation and we do that by uh, adding hydrogen using a nickel catalyst. So you see in the product there's less carbon-carbon double bonds so the melting point is going to increase such that it's just about solid at room temperature. Okay so that's the summary of all the learning outcomes for the fats and oils section of 2.1.